Hello everybody and welcome to the Whiskey Dictionary. I'm here today sitting in a river with Will from Tamworth Distilling. Uh, Will, if you want to say hi. How's it going? <laughs> so we're going to be drinking some whiskeys here. Um, many of you have probably heard about the Crab Trapper, which is this brand new whiskey, or mostly new, whiskey that is made using crab water. <laughs> but we're going to go into all that. However, uh, before we go into that, I wanted to taste, we have a flight here in front of us. We're going to go through many of these, maybe some of them off camera. And we're going to talk about a wheat whiskey first, because after talking to Will, I actually found myself very interested in trying this one. So, um, Will, can you tell us a little bit about the wheat whiskey that we're going to drink? Um, it is 100% uh, wheat in the grain bill, some chocolate weed and some cara caramel distillers. Uh -huh. um, uh, but it is, it is all wheat. Uh, this particular year um, happens to be in the four to five year range, but we only label as a two. So, okay. as distillers, we've kind of been Ooh, this is one of those honey. This is one of those honey bottles. One nice. Of those, one of those, uh, those batches we all kind of have been grabbing up. Well, so it's 100% wheat. Yep. All right. So that's most of you know. Well, that's pretty rare. Uh, usually people don't don't go for the full Monty. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> there you Cheers. go. Cheers. Okay. Definitely a wheat whiskey. <laughs> yep. Oh, wow, that's really good. You know, a lot of times I find that wheat whiskeys are not what I'm hoping them to be. Yep. And uh, I usually look for something a little bit kind of delicate on the flavor with not tasting like a bourbon. It's mm -hmm. kind of like my number one uh, thing when I try a wheat whiskey. Yeah. And with a lot of people just using 51% wheat to call it a wheat whiskey or even <laughs> 60, like this is very clearly a wheat whiskey. Yeah. And you can uh, actually, what's the what's the proof on this? I'm going to, I'm going to guess. Uh, I'm going to have to look at the bottle. Actually. I'm going to guess it's a 46. Uh, 45. Good call. That was pretty close. Yeah. 90, yeah. <laughs> All right. Nice. Yeah. Do you get the Do you get the chocolate I was talking about? I do. Finish? Totally. Yeah yeah. 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 Actually, that's that's very unique as far as I can think of. Hmm. Yeah. I made a. Um, actually, tried making strawberry smashes with this, so it was like a chocolate covered strawberry. <sighs> yes. <laughs> as a summertime drink, it was pretty good. <laughs> Um, so actually, for anybody just watching, I'm trying to think of anybody else that's doing 100% wheat whiskey. I'm sure they're out there, but let me know in the comments if you guys know anything, because I'd like to give them a try. Um, but specifically, that chocolate note is something unique to this, as yeah. far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Alright, so even though we have this whole flight in front of us, I'm going to skip directly to number five, because it's what you guys are probably here to see, is the Crab Trapper. Um, so this is something I'm just going to let Will tell you all about this, because uh, I'm dying to try it. So tell them everything there is to, so I can start drinking. <laughs> All right, so um, it is a four-year-old uh, bourbon reserve base. And so if, for those of you who are not familiar with the terminology in distilleries, usually we put reserve on a barrel, which means we're gonna hold it and, and save it for something special. So in our case, we have a, a line of um, flavored whiskeys that are all in these similar size, uh, these 200 milliliter tiny little bottles that are meant to be like whiskey experiences, um, you know, not like not like a half gallon of Fireball that you're gonna throw back. <laughs> um, <laughs> or send to a frat party. Yeah, right. Um, so we, uh, we work with our bourbon reserve and the reserve is, uh, it is stripped via pot still, so just directly line arm over to a, to a condenser. And then the second run, um, is uh, is done through a whiskey column and, and finished that way. Then uh, this particular one, I think, aged for nearly four years, just shy of four years, and they gave that to me to work with. They were like, "All right, I, I pitched a craft spirit. Okay, well, we've got to make a craft spirit. What have I got as, as a base?" <laughs> and so I was like, "Let's go pick a barrel." So I, I love that your first reaction wasn't just like, "What?" <laughs> you know, like, well, I, I, I pitched. It was crab, my idea. I was like, still, "Let's do crab whiskey." I guess I should say their first reaction. Yeah, <laughs> just like crab whiskey. Well, I, after yeah. beaver anal glands and and, uh, and a full-on turkey dinner, you know, like the sky's the limit. Maybe, yeah. You know. So, so anyway, for your for your reserve, I got into that, and I was like. Are you guys sure you want to use this to put crab? Because I, I, in sampling it, I was like, this is actually really good stuff. A um, lot of maple and caramel, uh, vanilla, really nice barrel character, and um, and uh, just a really well balanced uh, whiskey in general, uh, bourbon in general. So um, started with that, and then I did did a lot of research on um, uh, North American spice blends uh, for seafood in order to come up with a with a route there. I was I was considering going Asian. Um, but with my background in the deep south and whatnot, I started looking at those spices and I have a better understanding of that cooking. So yeah. um, decided to go, you know, a, a Atlantic Coast spice blend, seafood spice blend to kind, to of, kind of, yeah, yeah, to work with the crab. And um, if you guys aren't familiar here, here at Tamworth Distilling, we use um, a pretty unique technique in the distilling industry. And that is using vacuum um, stills, glassware. They're called, uh, we, re we refer to them in the industry as rotovaps. 
um, because the pot actually rotates. Okay. Um, it circ and that's the way it agitates, so you don't have to have an agitator in there to keep it mm -hmm. moving. That it and it also increases the surface area of the liquid, so okay. that it evaporates quicker. So you get quicker vapor. The vaporization, the vapors come over faster. Okay. Um, and then operating it, being able to drop it down to a vacuum. Uh, if you're familiar with Boyle's law at all, the lower the pressure, the lower the t the boiling point. Mm -hmm. So we're able to bring over molecules, uh, flavor and aroma molecules that would be destroyed if we were to boil them in a traditional, um, you know, fired uh, still. That's interesting. Now, do you do that for all the whiskeys that you make here? Not all the whiskeys. So we only do that for our flavoring. Only so for, so oh, we work oh, okay, with sorry, hundreds yeah. of different botanicals. We have, um, our owner calls it his Gentopia because we come up with several new gens a year. Yeah. Uh, but we use that, We most of them are compounded gens that we're actually doing uh, botanicals, botanical infusions, mm -hmm. and then distilling those on a rotavap okay. uh, to make uh, these distillates that are then compounded into gens and flavored whiskey in this case. So. Um, we, uh, I, I, well, but to begin with the crabs, um, uh, four-year bourbon reserve. Uh, the crabs are an invasive species from the coast up here. Their numbers are getting worse because the, um, the, uh, the inlets and the estuaries aren't freezing solid like they used to, and they would knock mm -hmm. their numbers back in the winter, so okay. it's warmer. There's more of them. One of these crabs can eat um, something like 60 bivalve uh, juveniles in a single day. Like so there's, oysters and clams and stuff? Right, right. right. So they're decimating the shellfish industry mm -hmm. um, and uh, <laughs> they're a little bit too small to eat. Um, they're, 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 they're eaten as a delicacy in places like um, Venice where they're originally from. They're, they're a European crab that came over about 200 years ago in the ballast of sailing ships okay. and, and have set up home here on the north in the northeast. Um, so anyway, we kind of saw it as a way to you know, bring about some environmental awareness about invasive species yep. and to create something that hasn't been created before. Okay. So how do you actually make the crabs into whiskey? So um, I start, I have a culinary, bit of a culinary background as well, and uh, I start making a crab stock. Well, I clean them first, of make course. sure they're alive, <laughs> and, and yeah. uh, you want to make sure they're fresh. Yeah. And um, then once they're cleaned, they go into a stock pot with a measured amount of water. So, and, hold on, yep. do, so do they arrive alive? Yeah, oh yeah, they're okay. very much alive. They, I need, like, as cruel as it sounds, I need them to be alive before I process No, them. totally. I know you do that with lobsters. I don't need a ton of crabs, so yeah. I, I wasn't Same sure. story. They, um, because of all the bacteria and the fact that they're, they're living on the bottom and burrowing mm -hmm. in the mud, they, uh, they tend to turn very, very quickly. So like how much crab are you getting when you're doing uh, it? Not between 80 and 100 pounds. Okay. Which is uh, over a thousand small crabs. small crabs. They're small, so, so that's, yeah. th that's well over a thousand crabs. <laughs> um, yeah, so I uh, take them, clean them. Yeah. Um, into a stock pot, measured amount of water. I bring it up, bring the temperature up slowly uh, to simmer gently, just until they're thoroughly cooked. Yep. And then um, from there, uh, I reserve the liquid and remove the solids. Mm -hmm. And uh, the liquid then is fortified with our neutral grain spirit. So we make neutral grain spirit in house that we use for our gins, our vodkas, and uh, and and um, basis for our our uh, our rotovap distillation sure. as far as all those infusions go. So fortify the stock and then I distill that on the rotovap. Okay. Um, I take that distillate and I actually use that to compound to to uh, to uh, fortify more stock. So I, it's it's getting compounded twice. <laughs> part, part of what happens when you're filming yeah, in a creek, outside. little bugs everywhere. Oh yeah. yeah. So um, uh, after the second distillation, that yeah. distillate is taken and then that's blended in with the whiskey. I do a similar thing with the spice. Then uh, we have a, we use eight spices, so mustard seed, coriander, um, dill seed, fresh bay leaf, paprika, mm -hmm. um, allspice, clove, and cinnamon. Okay, and those were all kind of inspired by that new by, England yeah, blend. Yeah, like the, the East Coast Spice Blend yeah, has a very strong 300 year tradition. That you're familiar probably with Zatarans or Old Bay. Yeah, for sure. Um, they all have similar spices in them. We can't use alliums of any sort, so we, we no, no working with onion, no working with garlic because um, I don't know if you guys are aware, but anything with sulfur contain anything sulfur containing does not belong in spirits. Okay. It is like uh, <laughs> it, it, that will truly keep vampires away. Yeah. Is it Craig you, Ellicke might uh, disagree with you? Oh yeah. <laughs> no, well, it's no, more just their stuff is very sulfury. Oh, it's, is it it's really? A scotch, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, but very, very, still very good. They use a worm tub, yep. and you tend to get that sulfury. Oh, thing. right on. Yeah. But, well, so we try totally to avoid don't. it. I mean, that's why we make <laughs> that's why we make copper stills because it, yeah. it binds with the sulfur and, and, and gets that out of there. Mm -hmm. So anyway, no alliums. Um, also, no citrus yeah. because uh, citrus is used in seafood in order to break down those amines mm. um, and and uh, make them not so uh, so offensive. Amines are, are, or amines are um, nitrogen-containing compounds that are at the top of seafood, mm -hmm. um, particularly when it goes bad. That part that burns your nose mm -hmm. and the back of your throat, not good. Okay, yeah, um, natural warning that. system for that. But uh, herbs like coriander um, kind of blend with that. They're very top, uh, very high notes. 
um, citrus-like mm -hmm. that actually can blend with that those amines and, and, and curb them, make them make the, make you not realize that that's what it is. And that's why they chose some of these spices to, to, to work with seafood, you know, particularly from an era that there was no refrigeration. Okay, that makes <laughs> sense. Lots of spices to cover. Oh, that, this fish is starting to turn. Well, I think it might <laughs> still be good for gumbo. <laughs> Yeah, it's a good thing they didn't think to put it in whiskey. Yeah, because <laughs> as far as I know, like you're, you guys are the first ones to do this that I've ever heard of. Yeah, I, I did research trying to find out, you know, like if there was any literature on distilling shellfish, mm -hmm. and I found nothing. <laughs> I'm not surprised. <laughs> uh, so I, but it's yeah. really interesting through yeah. the through the uh, the, the the research. Um, I've gotten really intimate with that smell, yeah. <laughs> with the crab scent itself, That's and distilling it. I, I started off making cuts. Yeah, you know, so I could get the top, figure out what the top notes are like, what the middle notes are like, mm -hmm. what the base notes are like, and. Um, it's been really, really fascinating to see how they work with this spice blend that's been around for so long. Yeah. Uh, in order to like really make it a pleasurable, like in a, de a deep experience. Cool. Um, I think I mentioned to you part of the idea from that came from um, the East Asian foods that use like uh, fish sauce. Right. You know, like yep. there, there's this whole. Um, when you add funk to something really pretty with the right spices, it gives it a depth. You know, I don't know if it's necessarily uh, umami, but it is another level of flavor and aroma. Um, you know, almost like, uh, I don't know, uh, like perfume <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> no, somebody that could, who's sweaty. That could be. <laughs> I, I totally get what you're saying. Yeah. All right. I'm dying to try this. Yeah. We should absolutely at least, you know, nose oh, yeah. it and, and talk about it a little bit. So. So actually, just for my information, so obviously these are fairly small bottles. So yep. this is a, a 350 or 200, 200, 200. Yeah, yeah, 200. Yeah. Um, so you you sell these, obviously. Mm -hmm. Do the are these available online as well? Um, through at Sealbox.com. Sealbox. Yep. Okay. Yep. I'll put a link to that in the description. Um, roughly, how much is does this cost? Uh, 65 for 200. So okay. it, it's up there. So 65 for, liquids, for a unique experience is more right. Yeah. Right. There's uh, <laughs> there's not you're not going to get another chance is, to try crab distillate. Yeah. <laughs> and I will also just say for any of you who've been watching the channel forever, you'll know this is literally the first flavored whiskey I've ever done on the channel uh, because <laughs> it was just something so unique. I kind of wanted to check it out. All right, so that's, how would I even describe that? It's a lot sweeter smelling than I expected. Mm -hmm. So. Well, the whiskey was super sweet. Yeah. It does almost, uh, it, I know that you weren't saying this necessarily, but it, it does kind of have like a weird perfumey kind of, oh, yeah. it's almost like that strong, pungent perfume. What the heck is that? <laughs> it's uh, amazing. Look, so yeah. the, the challenge, what's interesting to me is as as when I worked as a chef yeah. and working as a distiller and, and, and flavorist, um, is balancing spices to where you nothing stands out so yeah. much so you can't it, it becomes this homogenous thing that you you can't like what is it you know it's, like, it's <laughs> almost buttery but it's also it doesn't really smell very fishy or crabby or anything like that it's mm -hmm. almost it's it's very um it's a lot of depth to the to the to the nose very uh robust is the word i'm looking for all right anyway i gotta try yeah. this so yeah. cheers cheers <laughs> Okay, so it doesn't immediately just taste like crab or anything like that. A um, little thinner on the on the forefront, but mm -hmm. then it, it kind of builds itself uh, along the mid palate to, to the finish. Yeah. Um, actually, even as I'm sitting here, the finish is growing more. Yeah. Yeah. The, the 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 spice. That's really. And so you walk away with the spice as opposed to marshmallow. Mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> Good call. That's. How would you how would you describe this? Because I don't know that I could describe a crab flavored whiskey very well. Well, it it, it, <laughs> it comes in waves, and you can focus on any one part of it. And if yeah. you want to try proofing it down too, um, I I prefer it a little bit lower proof. Okay. Um, well, uh, and I, it releases. I don't know if you if you're you you may be familiar. Your viewers may be familiar. When you add adding water to whiskey right. to me as a distiller is not like a travesty. Right. Um, it's actually a a wonderful tool to experience the whiskey in a different way. Um, all of the, you know, there's there's thousands and thousands and thousands of molecules that make up the flavor and aroma in this glass. Right. Some of them are more soluble in alcohol, and some of them are more soluble in water. So as I bring the proof down, um, molecules that are more soluble in water are able are able to become aerosolized and more readily uh, picked up by your 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 taste uh, sense of sensors. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, so it will change it. It changes the way that it uh, that it tastes, and it will open up some more of the crab and a little bit more of the. Spice. I was just about to say almost immediately after doing this, just on the nose originally, it was kind of ah, oh, this is a little sweet. It smells like something I'm unfamiliar with, but almost immediately you pick up the crab on the nose after adding some water. Yeah. So that's definitely a little different. It becomes a little bit more briny. 
Okay. Yeah, so obviously it thins out the flavor just a bit. Yeah. But it spread I like that... to say it spreads the spectrum. Okay. So if you think about <laughs> the flavor on a spectrum of from, from high notes to yep. low notes, uh -huh. um, it, it spreads it out so you, it may be a little bit easier to discern what is what. Right. And where it is. Well, I don't I don't think it's uh, insulting to say adding water thins something out. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't think it's an insult. I add water to almost everything yeah. I drink. Um, mm -hmm. just because I also you know, I I'm I don't know. It just yeah. it's easier for me to drink. Actually, so I think maybe it was just kind of the, the second sip is is a little different anyway. Um, oh my gosh, I'm doing terrible with any sort of notes here though, because I don't even know what to say. It's <laughs> that's uh, part of what it, what I like about it is yeah. that it is a unique experience. Yeah. Um, yeah. For me, even at, even during the development phase, um, as I was working with it. I had to keep a small vial of it in my truck, you know, and risk, and risk uh, you know, I wasn't drinking I was it. Say, you would not want to spill that in a truck that gets hot. No. Oh my God. Well, uh, believe it or not, the, the crab distillate yeah. doesn't stick to things like you'd think uh, okay. seafood smell would. Yeah. It's very easy to clean off of uh, all the equipment that I've used it with. While everybody is scared of that happening, yeah. it, it, it's actually an, it's non-starter. No, no, non so, um, it comes right off. So do me a favor, list, yeah. list the spices that are in here again, because okay. I'm going to try to taste them. Um, coriander, there's mustard seed. Mustard seed. Uh, must, I would put the mustard seed, the pepper, Paprika, and some of the aspects of the bay as the mids. Okay. Um, and that kind of that kind of balances with the the butteriness of the crab. A little little bit if you if you can think of just like straight crab meat, what sure. that would taste like without dipping it in butter. Yeah. But the actual meat itself, the way that smells. Um, uh, and then the uh, the clove, allspice, and cinnamon are down at the bottom. Okay. Those are those because uh, for the distillation of those, I pushed it into the steam phase mm -hmm. so that um, I don't know if you're familiar with the term louche. No. Okay, so in um, in distilling, I mean, yes, of course I am, but they. But, they okay, don't know. Yes, I'm sorry. No, they, I'm they have no idea. So, so louching is um, is when you have <laughs> enough oils, or, or the proof is too low, or you're overloaded with oils, to where it begins the oils precipitate out into little droplets and it looks cloudy. Okay. Um, so I, pu I actually push the the spice distillation to where it begins to just louche to get those oils from the clove and the cinnamon. Okay. Um, all right, because yeah, I want the heavier ones that are gonna. And those are those are all taste. That's not that's not aroma. Yeah. that's coming over at that point. Now, so. obviously, power of suggestions a thing. Yeah, yeah, but, oh yeah. But as you're listing those things out, I'm like, okay, I get that. I don't get that. I don't get that. But so the the coriander for sure. Mm -hmm. um, the clove for sure. Yeah. Uh, a little bit of that cinnamon, but I think I'm just used to tasting that in anything yeah, yeah, bourbon. Yeah. Um, the rest of it, I think I just need to take more time with it. Yeah. yeah. You want to try the rye? I do, uh, yeah. That's, it's called uh, Chikorua, which is uh, the name for a mountain that we have here in Tamworth. Mm -hmm. um, supposedly, it's the most most um, photographed and painted mountain in North America. Okay. Um, I've heard that. That's how I know the name. Okay. It, it, it's very, and so. you can, if we walk just, actually, when we go to the Lyceum later, sure. you can see it right okay. across town. It's pretty cool. It's a rocky top, but it, it has this interesting story that, this is uh, this historical story that, Nobody knows if it's true or not. It makes a great story. <laughs> um, essentially, there was a there was a, a chieftain here locally, and this was in the 1600s. Um, and uh, his son was staying with a local English family. Son got into some poison and was and died. And and the the natives believed that they their son had been killed. So they um, they raided the farm and and killed the entire family. Uh -huh. But the men were away at the time. So the men came back. Got a got a party, got a got a raiding party together, and they went and hunted this chieftain down up to the, and he led them up to the peak of Mount Chikorua, uh -huh. where he cursed the ground and then threw himself off. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> All right. Yeah. So anyway, that's the, it's the story of it. But we um, this is a 100% um, rye whiskey. Awesome. Um, nice. uh, we we do use some malted rye mm -hmm. and then just some straight rye. But Perfect. it is rye as far as rye goes, and I I, I find it very drinkable. I like to mix it some. Mm -hmm. um, as well, uh, I think it has a lot of um, kind of spicy notes to it. It is definitely a spicy rye. Yeah. Um, and some uh, sometimes I can almost get a little bit of coconut out of it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, that's a, that's exciting to hear. Um, so it's 45 percent, and like you said, 100 percent rye. And uh, how old? I'm sorry, I missed it. Uh, I think rye is is ooh, two years. Two years. Okay. I think a minimum of two, but we always. Um, you know, we blend from multiple barrels, so it, yeah. it's just a minimum. Yeah, well, you have uh, way more barrels than you would think at a kind of a smaller distillery. Um, easily hundreds of barrels. Uh, all right, so we're going to give this guy a nose and a taste. So, cheers. Okay, yeah. You know, I love rye. Mm -hmm. I feel like, I, I know it's starting to kind of get a little bit more popular. A lot of people just use it in their, in their cocktails, but I have just always loved rye, probably more than I love bourbon, honestly. Yeah. I just find it, it's almost... Usually it's a little bit less complex, but it's more of a a strong flavor, yep. which I just find I always like really, really strong flavors. 
um, they'll know that I, I love things that cast strength and yep. just whatever else I can get if it's got a really, really strong flavor. I'm a big fan. So Awesome. So rye, usually. Cool. Mm. Okay. Oh, I like the I like the finish on that too. Yeah. Your uh, your stuff all has very good finishes. Yeah. <laughs> Which uh, I think that's the most important part. It's, yeah. it's leaving you as it's leaving. I can't. I, I I I. There are spirits out there that leave that bite or that cloying on the tongue. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah. It's enjoyable while you drink it, but not after you drink it. This is. And the, there's the coconut. So it's like yeah. right at the like now. Almost. Yeah. I'm almost getting um. Almost like this coconutty finish. Almost like coconut cream. You know what's weird? I'm I'm tasting something kind of ashy in mm -hmm. here, which I I'm surprised to to taste. I'm curious if that's just mm -hmm. me. But yeah, I don't know. It's very much on the finish here, but it could be like for, I'm not tasting the coconut yet. Um, I'm gonna have a couple more sips here. But. Yeah, yeah. It's like the coconut is almost like an afterthought for me. Mm -hmm. But I'm 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 weird in how I taste things. So you've also had way more of this than I have. <laughs> that was my first sip. So yeah, yeah. All right. Um, the the ashiness went away, so I don't know what that was. Maybe. Uh, what maybe do you, when you say ashy, what do you mean by, by that? Like so, um, embellish. Um, uh, very very mild version of what you would taste with like Lafroy. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, maybe like that barrel was a little extra charred than it should have. Than, yeah, than and that's entirely possible. Yeah. We're actually in the process right now of switching over from um, kiln dried barrels to air dried staves. Okay. Yeah, we're we're slow. We're just within the next year or two, we'll be coming com almost completely into air dried barrels. Mm -hmm. Now, why would um, you do that? Just out of curiosity. It, it is a very different product. It creates a different product. It's a okay. huge difference yeah. for us. Like the um, uh, what I like to say that the kiln dried kiln dried barrels. Um, especially with older bourbons, uh, reserve bourbons, it can it, it can almost be like buzzsaw oak. Have you ever stood over a uh, table saw where you're yeah, sawing like the smell? white yeah. oak? Yeah, it's like it, it can almost you can almost get hints of that. It's like being in the wood shop. Okay, you know? I love that. Yeah, no, I, I actually I, I build some stuff. I'm not very good, but I try to build stuff, yeah. and uh, really really enjoy that. So the kiln the kiln dried leaves more of those of those yeah. volatiles that are in there because um, they, they're trapped on the inside. It dries out on the outside more okay. uh, uh, faster, and then yeah, there's a lot of different theories as, as to it, but it, um, it mellows a little bit to use more air dried. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna kind of sit here and drink a few extra drams because we're already in the creek, may as well do it anyway. So just because you guys should know this. So we were originally just gonna film inside and then they were like, hey, you wanna film outside? We got some nice picnic tables. Then Will had this brilliant idea. Hey, why don't we put some tables and chairs in the water? <laughs> So why not? You know, it's awesome. And it's Blazing like 90 hot, degrees yeah. today. So. Blazing hot New England yeah. summer. <laughs> it's crazy hot today. So this was a perfect idea. Um, we're gonna have to check for, for crawfish and leeches and stuff later. But <laughs> but anyway, um, all right. Thank you guys very much for joining me here. And thank you, Will, for, for educating us and teaching us about the, the crab trapper and everything else that you guys make. Right. Thank um, you. Products are very, very good. Again, you guys can check the description down below if you're interested in checking anything out and uh, you know support small distilleries. So thank you very much for joining me here on the Whiskey Dictionary and I hope you have a great rest of your night. Cheers. Thank you.